All right, in this episode, I'm going to give you some amazing Earth Day art ideas. So I'm going to go on in to this topic. Um, I'm going to give you a range of different ideas, both using recycled materials, how can you, how you can incorporate um, different sustainable practices into the theme of Art Day, but also your classroom, how you can bring in different careers um, in the art world into your Earth Day lessons, so like totally making a solid package. Um, and also I'm going to give you a range of ideas using a range of mediums including um, painting, found objects, and photography. Guys, I am so excited, so let's get in to this episode. You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Hi there, I'm Kathleen McGivern, Ms. Artastic, and you're listening to the Ms. Artastic Podcast. In this episode, again, I'm going to be giving you five ideas for Earth Day art lessons that you can use with your choice of art mediums or materials. We're going to learn about Earth Day and reflect on what it means through creating art with the students in our classrooms. So before we get started, what is Earth Day? Earth Day is an event that is celebrated every year on April 22nd and it is used to bring awareness and support to environmental protection. This topic can cover anything from sustainable living practices to bringing awareness to things that are destroying our world such as deforestation or polluted oceans to awareness of endangered species, to the importance of reducing garbage and single-use materials and use reusable or recycled materials instead. It is about climate change. It is about our planet, the one blue sphere that every earthling relies on. And I don't know who needs to hear it, but going to Mars or relocating to another planet is not an option. Seriously, do you really want to live on Mars if Earth was also an option? Okay, maybe you do. But in my opinion, opinion, um, Earth is way more beautiful, diverse, it has air, it has water, you don't have to hopefully survive on tons of potatoes and try to figure out how to do that because that's difficult um and it like has life i mean people complain about wearing masks but are excited about the option of wearing a helmet and oxygen tank anyway my opinionated rant is over and yes i totally get if you disagree me disagree with me sorry um that is what opinions are for and what makes us diverse and diversity should be celebrated speaking of diversity we have to protect it and earth day allows us a reminder and reflection for thinking about the diversity this planet has to offer Let's dive into some ways we can reflect on our planet and also create art that will initiate conversations around the message we share through our art. Let's get started. So my first idea is using recycling um, materials or doing art that is recycling installation art. Oh yeah, bringing installation art into the classroom. This is the opportunity to do it. Earth Day. Okay, so you can have your students bring in recycled materials, even things like empty laundry detergent containers, plastic bottles, cereal boxes, plastic bags, plastic, plastic, plastic. Literally any empty empty recycling that is clean and has been rinsed out. Then they can, either in groups or pairs or individually, create installation art with the recycled materials. These can be installed in the classroom or on tables or in different areas of the school. They can be built, manipulated, assembled, or created in a way. 
or anyway, is what I'm trying to say. Um, they can build sculptures with them or arrange them in a way for the theme Earth Day. Maybe if you have lots of blue and green or if you paint things blue and green, um, you can build an earth, for example, or a representation of a Pacific gyre, whatever. Okay, it's up to the kids and this should be their self-directed exploration around something that is important, which is social awareness. Okay, um, it can be done in a way that brings attention to the importance of recycling or you can use it as a way to create a conversation about how much packaging there is or how much we consume or the overwhelming amount of plastic. You can teach about how it affects animals and the environment, what happens if we don't recycle, where it ends up, and then you, um, your students, they can collaborate on what their message will be and how they will show it through art, how it should be displayed, where it should be displayed, all those elements that are important when showing your art to an audience and something that professional artists carefully consider. So they can, of course, include other mediums or materials to help convey their message. And after, you can have kids write artists' statements about what the art means and then post the statements with the title of the work, mediums, materials, etc., um, where it is being displayed. So on the wall, to the side. So, of course, it's not interfering with the actual art in a visual way, right? We put it to the side. Um, yeah. So you can even have it on the school announcements, like that there is an Earth Day, there's Earth Day art installations around the school. I think you're doing it around the whole school. Um, you should inform the school. <laughs> um, so that it creates conversation in your school community and teaches the community how to interact with art. So not only are you teaching your students about installation art, creating art for the community, creating art that creates conversation, creating art that is something that people maybe even are invited to interact with, right? Um, and also, you can teach that not everyone is going to know how to interact with art, so to expect that as well. Um, yeah, so you can also be teaching the wider school community about art, about how art conveys a theme or message. Or maybe you can even invite other classes to collaborate with it. So maybe you install the art and then um, another class, maybe an English class, they write poems about the different pieces. Um, in fact, I once participated in a show at a museum where we had our shows, but another part of the show was that people, poet, po um, some different writers in the community or in the greater province, uh, they came and then wrote poems as reflections of their interpretation of our artworks, so things they were inspired by. But anyways, you could do that also in a scale that is within your school community. Um, and then you can engage everybody in a variety of different creative ways. All right, I'm just talking out loud because I started remembering that as I was saying this, and I thought, whoa, that's actually something that you could really go to town with, right? And this is also tying in different creative careers, and these are things that actually happen, right? You can even have, oh my gosh, you can even have an art show and then like slam poetry event. If you, I mean, I'm thinking this is an older, more high school thing. Oh, wouldn't that be lovely? Um, okay, here we go. So the day um, your art is installed, you can visit each artwork around the school or in the classroom and then let your students talk about their work and the message they're trying to convey. And then you can invite peers to provide positive criticism. So that's a teachable thing, right? This is another lesson. Critiques, right? You can teach about critiques. So you're not only teaching about Earth Day, you're not only teaching about installation art, you're not only teaching about creating art that creates discussion, but you're also teaching about critiques. So positive criticism, um, letting first the artist or artists know what they like, so what I like about the artwork, um, how they visually enter the artwork. So when I was at university, um, doing my Bachelor of Visual Arts, uh, we 
did this when we did our own critiques. So we usually talked about, sometimes the artist would talk first or you could have it where um, people talk about the art first and talk about what they like, what they notice, how they enter it, what they think um, it means to them, what stands out. So you could either, you could, and then the artist would talk. So it's up to you on how you want to guide that. And you can experiment sometimes, maybe the artist talk first um, and then other people provide their thoughts or other way around. Um, but again, positive criticism, nothing about what you don't like. That's not for, that's not really how we go about critiques, right? An artist is going to figure this out when they hear their audience's interpretation of the work, if they nailed it or not, right? That's for their reflections. So I highly recommend taking pictures of the work for portfolios right after the installation because you never know what will happen after. My friends, I have had plenty of things being wrecked in galleries and museums, my own work, by adults. <laughs> so you can't count on people being careful or not purposely manipulating. So I highly recommend taking pictures of the work for portfolios right after the installation because you never know what will happen after. Not everyone in a community will know how to interact with art and we have to assume that maybe it'll be manipulated by others either unintentionally or intentionally and BTW um, may be definitely a good decision to let the custodians in the building know that the recycling around the roof school is not garbage left on the ground. Mm, I feel like that's, that's somebody who should definitely be in the know. And you might want to talk to them leading up to it so they know what to expect, not after the fact. Um, always make them your friends, guys. <laughs> That's a tip. Um, okay, so that is life, right? Things happen. Even if assume, it's best to assume that it's going to be manipulated. Um, that is life. It happens. People slam their car doors onto your car when they're getting out of their cars in the parking lot all the time. It happens. It's annoying, but it happens. Um, so even in museums, people touch art, and I mean that is why there is security watching every moment, because. It's going to happen. We can't control others, but we can control the fact that we take pictures and we can use those pictures for the portfolios because at the end of this, anyways, the art might be recycled at the end of it, right? You might not want to keep it or the kids might not want to keep it. Depends on what you create. And it's also good to know that we don't have to keep everything. We can recycle it and it's been used a second time, right? Okay, next idea is recycling sculptures so students can, again, bring in recycled materials, but instead they will build sculptures with the recycling. So typically we go and buy new mediums and materials in our classrooms, but what if we used found objects or recycled objects instead to promote reusing and recycling? So this is a great way to teach kids how to have a sustainable practice as an artist and also forces them to be more creative because the objects come with preconceived ideas, forms, uses, and notions. So we have to think about how to be creative, right? We want to change that use, change that form, change that notion, change that preconceived idea. Um, and it's going to force them to think outside, think about the object outside of their original function, to turn it into an artwork, which will be, or could be, a recycled sculpture. Um, another thing that your kids can create are portraits of endangered animals okay so this one again you could choose it choose for it to be a student-led or student research project so students they can create portraits of or artworks of endangered animals um, as a class or as individuals so depending on their age they can research endangered species um, it could be globally or maybe each kid pulls out a continent out of a jar and they research that area um, or you can do your local area or count country or continent um, your class your choice 
but to create a portrait of an endangered animal and create a display in the school to bring awareness to these disappearing species. Hey, that'd be a pretty good name for the show. Disappearing or Vanishing Ghosts. Um, brainstorm that with the kids. I'm sure you can go far with that. And it should be their input that decides it. You can even give them each jobs as part of a curatorial team, right? So we can bring in art jobs or careers in art into this lesson as well, right? So you can talk about curators, what the role of a curator is, what are some things that curators do. You can have a curatorial team, right? Which would be the whole class. <laughs> and each team would be in charge of different aspects of what a curator would do. So some kids cut and assemble artist statements. Some make labels for the titles for each of the artworks. Um, and they have to maybe also go and ask the artist what the titles are, the mediums, the materials, blah, 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 all the and the spelling of their artist's name or their name, right? Some artists don't go by their real name, right? Um, they go by an artist's name or a professional name. So you ask them that, um, and then they collect all that information and then create their, their labels for the titles. Um, some can be designing the signage or posters or little handouts. Uh, another teachable moment um, would be that and also again a curator is a job in the art world so if you're having to incorporate that into the curriculum that would be something you could easily teach within another lesson right tie it all together make it natural right the kids are going to want to learn about curators if they're curating their own show right and they get to practice that skill it makes sense and it makes it more engaging they're going to remember it instead of being doing a powerpoint on what curators are no one's going to care as much <laughs> um yeah make it meaningful right so if you're looking to teach about jobs in the art world that's a way you could tie it into the lesson Hey guys, I just wanted to take a pause from this episode to let you know about my art resources for educators. You see, I create art resources for art teachers, general teachers, or homeschooling parents to use in the elementary and middle school levels. I really enjoy creating artworks that will target various areas of the curriculum, encourage students to experiment with a range of mediums, and I like to work with themes and topics that are of high student interest. I'm always keeping my eye open for what is all the rage in the student world. I want to save teachers time and therefore I design high quality art lessons that will provide teachers with all the elements they need to teach and implement a lesson successfully. From the lesson plan to rubrics, reflections, and all the steps broken down into visual slides, I've got you covered. My art resources can be found in my Teachers Pay Teachers Store, Ms. Artastic, or by subscribing to my art resource library for art teachers, the Artastic Collective. Find links to my TPT store and my membership in my blog, MsArtastic.com. Now, back to this episode. For more animal art projects or portraits of endangered species, you can find the art lessons in my TPT store, Ms. Artastic, or in the Earth Day section of Holidays and Seasonal with your Artastic Collective membership. Remember, the membership opens only twice a year, once in August, once in January, so make sure you bookmark the site so you're ready for enrollment. Um, and you can find the links to the resources in the show notes on my blog uh, or find the link in the description of this video or podcast. Um, or you can visit misartastic.com and click the podcast show notes. All right, next idea is that you can create art, um, ocean art specifically, with watercolor paint. So you can also create art or illustrations of different ocean scenes or creatures, oceanscapes. Of course, using watercolor paints. You can even add the salt on there for both the effect and it creates with watercolor paints when it dries, but also because that medium makes sense for the theme of an ocean. 
Instead of rubbing the salt off, you might even choose to leave the salt crystals on. I don't know, it's up to you. I'm just throwing ideas out there. So have fun with it and use it as an opportunity for students to create choice work. Let them research, find reference images, draw, paint, create. Give them a theme, watch a couple videos to prime them. You can do a think pair share where the kids think about ideas or animals they know of in the ocean or scenes they could draw. For middle school and high school, kids you can have um, them do higher level thinking so they can and research the effects humans are having on the oceans, such as overfishing, pollutions, oil spills, garbage gyres, animals stuck in the garbage or full of plastic. And then once they think um, to themselves, they can think to a person beside them for a minute. So you can say, okay, now you're going to talk in a voice um, that only the person beside you can hear. So use your um, shoulder to shoulder voice as you talk to the person. You're now going to talk and share your idea to them and then you're going to listen to theirs. And then now you don't only have just your thinking but the thinking of another person too. Remember, two brains are better than one. Okay, so then they can talk for another minute or so. Um, you can allow more time for older kids, right? So older kids can be a few minutes of pair share talk because they can handle that amount of conversation. Then stop everyone and do a share out to the class. So this sets kids up for success and ensures engagement. And you'll notice you'll get a lot more hands up because you didn't do a cold call out for answers. You let them think to themselves, think with a friend and get more ideas, then share out. You can also do a share to a group before you do the whole class. Anyway, after that, you can dive on into your art project and have them create beautiful watercolor paintings themed around the oceans. Okay guys, next is Earth Day Photography. Finally, you can have them do some photography. So I reached out to a professional photographer for some input on this one for you guys. So you can get the ideas that are beyond my own. So Esther Mormon, who is the photographer that I talked to, she is a wedding photographer who captures the most natural, original photographs. Honestly, you must check out her Instagram. The pictures are amazing, they will take your breath away. Here is Esther's suggestion for a photography lesson with your students, which you can do with anything that takes a picture. So here's what she says. First off, I want to say that introducing kids to photography at an early age is such a phenomenal idea for a couple reasons. For one, they learn how to express themselves in another way. Secondly, you are introducing them to what could be one of their passions and they didn't even think about it. I have a four-year-old niece and she has a play camera and absolutely loves it. She walks around taking photos of nature, her brother, her parents, and tries different photography tactics. I would recommend a scavenger hunt as an interactive, engaging activity for kids. Here's how it would go. You would create a list of things that the child or the children have to go and photograph, then bring back to you for review, like a dandelion, grass blades, a tree, a teacher in the school, a painting in the hallway, a door, a stop sign, etc. It's really interesting to see what types of photos kids come back with and seeing each child's different perspective. Have the best time and I guarantee you that your students will love this. Esther Mormon. She also provides recommendations for cameras that you can get for your own kids 
or for your classroom. So if you have the budget or get a donation for your room or have a fundraiser or GoFundMe campaign, these are perfect for your kids. You can find the links to cameras, which she has recommended, some for both primary age students and intermediate, on the show notes for this episode on my blog. Link to the blog post in the description of this video or podcast, um, or you can just head on over to MsArtastic.com and click podcast show notes. Esther is a skilled wedding photographer. So if you have a side hustle business taking pictures for weddings, you really need to check out the courses she is offering. You can find the link in the description of this podcast, or again, the show notes on my blog, my favorite course she offers is Goodbye to Awkward Photo Shoots. And my friends, when you look at her Instagram, you know they ain't awkward. So check out the courses um, educated by emp.mykajabi.com. You can find the link in the podcast show notes on my blog. I highly recommend it. She has lots of different courses. Or if you just want to see your pictures, because honestly, your breath is going to be gone, you can follow her on Instagram at Esther Mormon Photo. I will have the spelling of her name and her tag in this podcast description. So just take a look at that on whatever your podcast player is. Or you can click the link if you're reading this on the blog or listening to it on the blog. Anyway, well, my friends, those are my favorite ideas for art for Earth Day. Remember, I have already prepped and planned art lessons, Zen Doodle coloring pages, and directed drawings for Earth Day, specifically, um, in my Teachers Pay Teachers store, Ms. Artastic. Simply search Ms. Artastic on TPT and click the Earth Day section on the left-hand side, and you'll see all my resources. They're fully prepped and ready to go. Or um, they're already in your Artastic Collective membership. Find the link to my TPT store in the notes of this episode or link to it in my blog or show notes on my blog. Or just Google Ms. Artastic. Um, it'll come up. Join me next time when I talk social emotional learning art ideas for your classroom. Until next time, this is Kathleen McGivern. Signing out.